Chapter 4. Secrets Unshared I sat at the door listening to the wind try to pry it open. Fortunately, the door opened outwards. Unfortunately, the door opened outwards, so I, was so I wasn't able to open it when I heard Varian crying out from the lab due to the snow piled at the door. I sat there for about 20 minutes. I heard the storm calm down and Varian opened the door behind me. I fell backwards into a thin layer of snow and looked up to see, Varian! Piper? He helped me up. He had obviously been crying. W what are you doing here? My, my dad told you to go home. Despite the tears, he still looked concerned for me. I touched his tear-stained face. This storm was too much for me to walk home, I sighed. Varian, are you okay? You, you marched in that storm rather impulsively. He smacked my hand away. I'm fine. He marched further into the house and I quickly followed behind. You're obviously not. What happened in there? Is your dad okay? I put a hand on his shoulder and he hid it away again. Why don't you go see for yourself? My dad is trapped in the amber and it's all Rapunzel's fault. He yelled then hugged himself. It's all her fault. I stepped toward him. Varian, what makes this her highness's fault? Varian clenched his fist in anger. She promised to help Piper, but she didn't. Now my dad is trapped, and I realized my friend is a liar. He started to tear up again. Varian, I don't think... But I couldn't finish. Varian interrupted me with a snap. What do you know? I jumped back, scared by the yelling. He reached his arm out in regret. Piper, I I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have yelled. I just... It's just... I thought the princess was on my side. He looked down. I sighed, then looked outside. I then suddenly remembered my dad. My, my dad! I have to go check in on him! I looked back to Varian. Are, are you gonna be alright? He rolled his eyes. I'll be just... just fine. Let me go with you. He took off his coat as the outdoors were heating up quickly. Alright. I gave him a warm smile. I think we both needed it after the snow. We both walked up to my house. The door had been blown off its hinges. The wind probably blew it in. That's probably not good. Very shrugged. Maybe. He seemed to be indifferent, like he was in another world. I looked at him in concern. Then he snapped out of it. Oh, I mean, um, oh no. I, I hope your dad is okay. <laughs> he smiled nervously. I felt bad. I knew he was still upset about his dad. We searched the house together. My dad was nowhere to be found. <laughs> great! My dad is missing! Just great! I sighed, looking into the kitchen. Still no sign of him. Varian huffed. The good news is, there's no difference, he laughed. I think he was trying to make a joke. Maybe he was trying to make light of the situation. What do you mean? I turned around, glancing in my bedroom door behind him. I mean, because uh, he never paid attention to you now that he's gone. What's the difference? <laughs> he giggled nervously, then frowned. I shrugged, my eyes focusing on the doll in my room. It's all right, Vari, just one sec. I walked into my room and picked up my doll. We should go tell the royal family, I turned around. Varian furled his eyebrows. No, we, we, we can't trust them, I groaned. Varian, my dad is missing. And my dad is trapped in amber, Varian retorted, his anger returning. At least you know where he is. I mean, I don't entirely know why I said that, but it obviously made Varian upset. I didn't even care about my dad. Why was I so concerned about him? Would I even be worried if I had never met Varian? Would I even notice my dad's absence? He never noticed mine. Varian sighed and rubbed his temples. Look, before we trust them with more trouble, they'll end up ignoring. Let's just wait a couple days, okay? I nodded, gulping. I I'm sorry, I muttered. Varian rubbed his arm. It's alright, Piper. Hey. Viper against the world, eh? I, I laughed. Sure. <laughs> Viper against the world. I chuckled softly, giving him a fist bump. For the next three days, we barely talked. He was always trying to get his dad out, and I tirelessly searched for mine. Early in the morning, on the fourth day, Varian ran up to me. Hey, you haven't found your dad yet, have you? I don't know why it was so important to him to know, but I shrugged. Not yet. But I have a good feeling about to... I was interrupted. Oh man, we should really go tell the royal family. He looked hopeful that I would be up for it. I shrugged. After what you said, I think you're right. We should take this into our own hands. I started down my porch, tying my hair into my usual pigtails. Varian stopped me. No way, he's been missing for too long. You, you gotta tell the king. 
I looked at him in confusion. Since when do we trust the king? I tilted my head. He snorted. We've, we've always trusted his highness. It's Rapunzel who lied. Um, all right then, but let me get a couple things for the journey. I, I looked into my house, then back to Varian. He smiled. Great! I already have my things, so hurry up. He pushed me inside, and I gathered my things cautiously. I was unsure of what he was up to, but did I really care? Varian was my best, albeit my only, friend, but he would never go behind my back. We went to the castle, and he said he'd wait outside for me. As I approached the throne, I knelt before the royal family. I had only really talked to Rapunzel once or twice. I don't think the king or queen even knew my dad had a daughter. Hello, young lady, the queen said gently. What's your query? she asked in a simple tone. I looked at them. Hello, your highness. I'm I'm afraid my reason for visit to uh reason uh, of uh for the visit today is one of one of great worry. Great, I was stuttering and messing up. I was so anxious to be there, especially talking alone. I wish Rapunzel was there. Where was she? Oh my, what's wrong? I believe Her Highness could hear the worry in my tone. It was kind of obvious. During the storm, my, my father went missing. It's been four days and no sign of him. I stood up, wanting to seem more serious, but my knees were shaking and my hands were sweaty. The king looked at the queen. Who is your father, young lady? My voice shook. His name slipped my mind for a moment. Um, Tenor Wilson, I suddenly sputtered out. The queen tilted her head in confusion. He has a daughter? I knew it. They didn't know. Her highness cleared her throat. <clears throat> Four days, you say? I nodded solemnly. She looked at the king, then back to me. Where have you been staying in those four days? My own home, your highness, though the, the, the door was um, ripped off in the storm. I picked up my sleeves anxiously. Was I not supposed to be staying there? I see, the queen stood up. Is there anyone else in Corona you'd be able to stay with? She looked very concerned. I started to sweat more. If I said Varian, would she be upset? He said they had thought he had attacked Rapunzel. I clenched my fist and sighed. No, ma'am. The king stroked his beard knowingly. I see. We'll come back to this. May you wait outside. I nodded and exited. I could hear a commotion from a couple halls down, but I stayed in place, waiting to be called back in. When I was, the line had nearly disappeared. If I remember correctly, there were about three or four people behind me. The king stood. We decided you shall stay in the castle for the time being, helping the maids in return for the housing. Her highness nodded. Ethel, please find... The queen looked at me, realizing she hadn't learned my name. P Piper, I stuttered. Find Piper a room to stay in. Ethel, one of the maids, I suppose, guided me out of the room. We passed a hall. I could see many people had gathered. I walked past the maid, who seemed frustrated, and followed after me. What happened? I asked Cassandra, who was in the crowd. Cassandra turned around, recognizing me. Oh, um, Pepper, was it? I quickly corrected her. P Piper! She snapped her fingers. Uh, right. You were Varian's lab partner. Sorry to tell you, kid. He just made off with the sum drop. I blinked in shock. W what? No, he's waiting outside the... Oh my god, he's waiting outside for me. I face palmed. I, I need to update him. I tried to turn around, but Cassandra put a hand on my shoulder. Hold up. Why would Varian be waiting outside for you? She furrowed her eyebrows curiously. I sweatered. Uh, I was telling their highnesses that my dad was missing, and Varian said he'd wait outside since the royals aren't too fond of him right now. Cassandra looked back to Eugene, who was comforting Rapunzel, who seemed to be in shock. Sorry, kid. I think you're a pawn, she frowned. I laughed. A, a pawn? What does that mean? Cassandra sighed. Cassandra sighed. Like I said, Varian just made off with the sun drop. I think he was using you talking to the king and queen as a distraction. D distraction C Cookies! No! Varian wouldn't go behind my back. He wouldn't! I cried out. Rapunzel walked away from Eugene to me. Piper did cast? Cassandra interrupted her. I, I told her. Rapunzel looked at me sympathetically. I didn't want her sympathy, though. Piper, I'm sorry. I know you and Varian were close. I turned around in anger. I don't want to hear it! 
I walked back to Ethel, who didn't seem to care. She led me to a small room with a bed and a desk. There was barely any room to move. I threw my bag on the desk, and my doll fell out of it. George, I picked up the doll. <laughs> I guess you were the only person to ever really care. I took the doll to my bed. Maybe this is Rapunzel's fault. If she had just tried to help, Varian wouldn't have had to steal the sun drop, I muttered. I thought that could be the only answer. I thought Varian was right to have done this. I thought if Varian was wrong, then I was wrong. I looked out the window, realizing I had hardly any of my things, not even my pajamas. I quickly got up and anxiously walked down the hall, bumping into Cassandra on my way down. Pip Piper, what are you doing? I, um, um, I didn't expect for the king and queen to ask me to stay in the castles, so all I have are the things in my bag and the clothes on my back. I picked up the threads in my sleeves anxiously. It was definitely coming apart at this point. Oh, well, I guess Raps and I can take you down to old Corona to pick up your things, though we have to be careful. We have no idea what Varian could be doing with the sun drop. She looked behind her, I assumed to Rapunzel's room. We'd have to get clearance, though. I nodded. From their highnesses. Cassandra smiled. Exactly. I don't know how well they'd take wraps going down to old Corona. Maybe we can make Eugene take you. I rubbed my arm. I don't think Eugene likes me very much, since I was friends with Varian and all. I shrugged. We can change that. She guided me down the hall and back to the throne room. All the villagers had gone, and the king was signing papers. Cassandra cleared her throat and rocked in front of the king and queen. Ahem, your highnesses? Hello, Cassandra. The king didn't look up from his papers. Cassandra rocked further towards the throne. Um, Piper doesn't have any of her things. I'm, requ I'm requesting to take her down to Old Corona, maybe with Rapun- You may take her, but bring Eugene. Rapunzel is to not go with you at any cost. The king interjected. He looked at her seriously, glancing at me. I had been hiding in the doorway the whole time. And for everyone's safety, avoid Varian's house. Cassandra nodded and took my arm. I whined. Oh man, I was really hoping Rapunzel could come. Cassandra laughed. Yeah, uh, King Frederick isn't too fond of putting Rapunzel in harm's way. I mean, heck, she went missing for 18 years. She turned the corner to a room with a door similar to mine. I used to think my dad was normal, but seeing how strict everyone else's dads are, I'm starting to think he wasn't that great, I sighed. Cassandra knocked on the door. The door was swung open by a tall, muscly, bald man I didn't recognize. Hey, Cass, what's up? He smiled at Cassandra, giving me a glance of confusion. I need to talk to Eugene. She put her hands on her hips. Oh, and this is Piper. You'll be seeing her tidy up around here for a bit. Piper, this is Lance, Eugene's friend. Lance nods me. Nice to meet you, Piper. I nodded back. Eugene pushed past Lance and sighed. What do you want? He looked at me. Yep, he definitely did not like me. Piper has some things in old Corona she needs, like, hmm, <clears throat> clothes. But the king won't let us go without you, she sighed, eyeing him up and down. Well, of course he wants me to go. Someone needs to defend the ladies. He popped his collar cockily. Cassandra laughed. More like someone to be bait if we need to make a quick escape. Eugene snorted. I was going to say yes, but now I'm not doing it. Cassandra groaned. Come on, Eugene. The kid needs her bare necessities. Eugene sighed dramatically. Ugh, fine. I'll go with you. If, he smirked. Cassandra huffed. Uh-oh, there's an if. Eugene laughed. If you say I'm the best to defend you, my full name. He gave Cassandra a cocky smirk. Cassandra sighed and looked at me, probably because it was all my fault she needed to do this. She muttered unintelligible words. Eugene kept a hand behind his ear. What was that? Cassandra sighed louder. Eugene Fitzherbert is the best to defend me. Eugene pointed finger guns at Cassandra. Dang right I am. Let me get my things. He walked to his desk and reached for something that wasn't there. Uh, right, I gave that to Angry. He dusted his hands. Well then, I'm all packed. Let's go. We all headed out, letting Rapunzel know on the way out. I sat in the back of the carriage with Eugene as Cassandra drove. 
So, I laughed anxiously. So, you and Varian were lab partners, eh? He began to interrogate me. I nodded. <laughs> yep. I laughed nervously, my hand clutching my doll inside my bag. So, did you know he was going to be stealing the sundra? He leaned toward me. I shook my I shook my head. No, we had a fight a bit before it. I think that made it easier for him not to tell me. I sighed. What's in your bag? He glared at my bag. Did he think it had a weapon? I pulled out my doll. J George? Oh, aren't you a little old for dolls? He tilted his head condescendingly. I chuckled. <laughs> aren't you a little old? Just in general. He leaned back in his seat and stopped talking, glaring at me for the rest of the ride. We suddenly stopped and Cassandra spoke from the front. I think we need to walk the rest of the way. We got out as Cassandra tied up Maximus. The path was covered in rocks. I sighed. Don't worry, my house is just that way. I pointed to the roof of my house. As we walked toward it, we realized the rocks hadn't reached it yet. Eugene stood on the porch. I'll stand guard. Cassandra stood on the porch as well. No, I will. Go inside, Fitzherbert. Eugene looked inside. It was nearly pitch black. No, Cassandra. They argued as I walked inside to my room. I started to gather my things when I heard a chittering from the window. Rediker, I giggled, running to the familiar face. You have no idea how happy I am to see you. I picked him up, then Varian's head appeared in the window. Varian! He laughed at my startled face. Hey, Piper, he smiled. S sorry for leaving you to the wolves back there, and sorry for not telling you about my plans, he chuckled. Varian, you lied to me. What you did was not only dangerous, but the treason! I plopped the raccoon back onto his head. I, I know, and, and I'm sorry. Just just be patient with me, okay? He, he smirked. His goofy smile was gone. I frowned. D don't worry, I, I know what I'm doing! I rubbed my arm. I'm gonna let you off easy. If Cass sees you, she's gonna try to arrest you. Go. You're right, you can't go with me. That raised suspicion, he chuckled. But, but trust my plan. I know what I'm doing. Varian, I trust me, okay? He reached through the window and held my hands. I felt a lump in my throat. Okay, just promise you won't hurt anyone. He furrowed his eyebrows. Piper, say it. I tilted my head. What? Say you trust me and I'll promise not to hurt anyone. I sighed. All right, I trust you. He ripped his hands away. Great, I won't hurt anyone. See you soon. Why would you? Before I could ask, he had run off. Cassandra knocked on the doorway behind me. You, you got everything? This place gives Eugene the creeps. I am not scared, Eugene shouted from outside. I sighed, looking out the window. Yeah, I've, um, I, I've got everything. Cassandra nodded. All right, let's get you out of here before Varian finds us. Or we find him. I looked to the window, gathering the last of my clothes off the floor. Cassandra took a dress out of my hands. Geez, you haven't washed these since the storm? It's sopping wet. I laughed. Yeah, I don't really know how to do laundry. I scratched my neck. Let's change that, Cassandra said as we walked out of the room. I looked back, anxiety rising in my throat. What was Varian planning? End chapter 4